Saints, Eagles, recap and review. Ladies and gentlemen, just a few minutes ago, I was sitting in the Superdome. Just a few minutes ago, I thought we were walking to a victory. Just a few minutes ago, I thought it's third and 16. Defense has been good. No way. I mean, until he has to score a touchdown, we're good. No problem. Give up 10 yards here, whatever. Fourth and six, fourth and seven, stop them. Good day. It'd be a good day to be a Saints fan. My oh my oh my oh my oh my oh my how uh how things change. So let's talk about it. We're gonna talk about the whole game, obviously. Now, real quick, okay, because obviously I'm getting a ton of tweets, seeing a lot of comments pop up, obviously heard a lot of comments. Uh leaving the Superdome. Let me say this. If two games didn't make a season, and the first two games is certainly didn't make up the season, didn't define the season, then one game doesn't define the season. You know, the Saints lost this game. That's bad. They looked like garbage. No doubt about it. We will get into that. But I'm seeing a lot of tweets that are Clint Kubiak is a fraud. Clint Kubiak uh, is Pete Carmichael. is the same team as last year. Let's not go that far. Okay. There is certainly plenty to be upset about. But giving up on Kubiak or or the team or whatever uh, is a little crazy. We are still two and one. The Buccaneers lost. You know, the divi- everything's still right in front of us. It wasn't too long ago; it was three weeks ago that we were saying, "Look, if we go, if we go two and four in our first six, we're we're flying." You know, so all eyes are on next weekend Atlanta. We go to Atlanta. We win that game. We're three and one. You know, we're we're okay. We're okay. So all this tells us today is the Saints aren't going to win 17 games. That's what we know for sure. What else we know for sure is that Taysom Hill is incredibly important to this team. Uh, Obviously, Taysom Hill didn't play, uh, and I think that limited the offense. Uh, Extremely limited the offense. This offense was a far, far cry, far cry from what we saw in the first two games. Design-wise, scheme-wise, Everything was different. Uh, I, you know, McCoy going down and uh, Taysom not playing, I think forced the Saints to basically use like 10% of their playbook. It's one thing when Taysom is not there because then you can kind of, you know, you have time to scheme. And even though Taysom was downgraded Friday or Saturday, so it's not like we had a week week to prepare. McCoy going down on the first play of the game coupled with Taysom – It just totally changed the game. I mean, it totally eliminated all of the stuff that we saw in the first two weeks that was so successful. And you have to, you have to think on a lot of those third and one, fourth and one, a lot of those moments, Taysom being in is is a huge factor. And speaking of fourth and one, let's talk about the field goal. So this downs, this play right here, this play right here is just insane to me. The decision to go for it right here on fourth and one instead of kicking the field goal. So let's look at the let's look at the situation because this makes no sense, right? It's three. It's at this time it is three nothing. Your defense is pitching a shutout. You have punted quite a few times when you could have kicked a field goal. I think it might have been here. I don't know. It must have been here. Yeah, here at the Philly forty. You're talking about not that long of a field goal to punt there, to punt here on fourth and eight at the Philadelphia 40 when you're up three nothing. Punting here is pretty nuts. So punting here is telling me and telling the world, we expect the defense to win this game. Going for it here kind of says the opposite because if you go for it here, You're saying, well, we want to score. We're on the 18. We're on the 18. We want to score. We do not want to kick a field goal. Even though all you've done all day is kick a field goal. So even if you get it, even if you get the fourth and one, you still have a very high chance of kicking a field goal. So why not just kick a field goal, go up 6 nothing, to where if Philly does turn around and score a touchdown, something they haven't done all game, you are a field goal away from winning the game. Like, this decision made no sense. Dennis Allen was put in a very tight game, uh, a a game where coaching really, really mattered. Sirianni did his best to blow this game. And this decision right here 
uh, really hurt us. Really hurt us. It hurt us because, obviously, we ended up losing by three. But it also hurt us because, two pl- whatever it was, four plays later, uh, Saquon Barkley runs in for, for a touchdown. So this, you know, I'm not going to say this decision alone cost us the game, but this decision right here makes absolutely no sense. And we're not going to talk, we'll, we'll talk later about the Nick Sirianni decisions. He was absolutely butchering this game, butchering the decisions. He decides not to kick field goals when he should have, and then he decides to kick a field goal when he should have punted. Uh, some of the craziest things I've ever seen. But let's look at the box score. Let's go ahead and look at the box score here. All right, so first downs, 20 to 12. Total play is 67 to 50, 55. Total yards, 460 to 219. Uh, total drives are even. Yards per play, 6.9 to 4.0. Um, rushing, 6.9 to 3.1. Time of possession, 32 to 27. Turnovers, 2 to 1. Okay. Now, y'all, if y'all been watching the channel long enough, you know how to read a box score. The Eagles should have won this game. Like you look at this box score, the Saints should not have won this game. The Saints should not have been in this game. Uh, I mean, you're talking about almost a three yards per play advantage. You're talking about being outgained 240 yards. Uh, you know, uh, it's the the rushing. You're giving up almost seven yards a carry. All you can do is run for it, 3.1 yards a carry. <clears throat> you lose time of possession. You're running. I mean, you run 12 less plays. Like, everything points to Philly should have won this game. It, it wasn't pretty. And the only thing I can really think of, and what it looked to me, it looked like to me that we were just running the same kind of eight plays. We were running the same thing over and over and over again. We couldn't really get anything going. Everything was difficult. I mean, running the ball, Alvin Kamara had 26 carries for 87 yards. It was just pound Camara, pound Camara, pound Camara, pound Camara. That's it. That's all that we did all day long. And we didn't even do that that successfully. If we were running Alvin at six, seven yards a clip, yeah, sure, just keep keep going. But just churning this 3.3 yards a carry uh, was really tough. And a lot of people are asking, like, why did we run the ball? Why didn't we throw the ball? You know, if McCoy is out, like, why did we just continue to pound Alvin Camara? We will know more this week when we hear the interviews and we hear uh, the coaches talk and kind of explain what the situation was. But if I had to guess, I would guess that uh, I think they were just so limited. I think the playbook was just incredibly limited to where they were kind of stuck in a situation where they couldn't run the ball how they want to. So they kind of just had to pound the ball. Like they couldn't really run the ball the way they wanted because the line is the, the offensive line is people are in different in different places. Like think about how difficult that is for this offense. This offense is very very you know everyone we've heard about it all year long. This offense is very much each person has a like their individual job and that creates like this big system. Well, when Lucas Patrick with no prep at all is all of a sudden asked, hey, man, all that stuff you were planning to do and we prepped you to do at left guard, do it at center. Like, all of a sudden now, you're asking the guy to play. You're asking two people to play out of position because Patrick's sliding over to center, and now we're filling in where Patrick was at guard. So you got two people out of position in a already confusing situation. You're already limited because of Taysom. So I think Kubiak just had just had no faith in kind of widening the playbook and asking people to do things that they weren't prepped to do. And one of the things that I think he thought we not, we're not prepped to do is protect Derek Carr and pass protection. So he's boxed into a corner where it's like, well, Kubiak's not going to give up on the run, but what we can do running wise is limited. We don't have in all of the plays with Taysom in motion and Taysom in the backfield and, and taste them at tight end and taste them here and taste them there. Those plays are gone. All right. So you take those plays out, throw them out of the playbook. See ya. Now you've got all the plays you're asking specific things out of the offensive line. Those plays are probably gone. So the running game is now whittled down to a very select amount of plays, which we saw today. But then it's like, well, I can't, I can't ignore the run. I can't abandon the run because then I'm going to ask my offensive line to pass protect. And I'm not comfortable doing that. 
I think we I, I tweeted this out, but I noticed that during the game, the Saints were running a lot of three wide receiver sets. And we talked about it for the last two weeks, how the Saints had virtually abandoned three wide receiver sets. And they were opting more for the heavy package of two tight ends, two running backs, and Taysom usually filling one of those roles. So it looked to me like they were forced into these three wide receiver sets because they couldn't do what they wanted to do because Taysom's not on the field. And I know it sounds a lot like, well, damn, I mean, you know, people have injuries all the time. Like, like the Eagles lost A.J. Brown or didn't have A.J. Brown. They lose Devontae Smith. Injuries happen, you know, and if this if this team is this tied to Taysom Hill being on the field in order to create, and I don't know if it was a situation of just because of the combination of Taysom and McCoy happening, like, so fast. I mean, Taysom happening Friday or Saturday, and then McCoy happening first play of the game, and then all of a sudden it was like, we got to kind of work with what we've got. I don't know if that was the situation, but it was ugly. I mean, the offense was ugly, ugly, ugly. It, it was very similar to last year. You know, Carr, I think, had 50-something yards passing at half. Uh, it was very reminiscent of last year. Very reminiscent. It, it was – and the saddest part is is we, we had a really good opportunity to win this game. Which is where I'll say, you know, I, I'm, I'm not <clears throat> I, I, I'm not – coming out of this game throwing away my Saints hat and Saints shirts. You know, I mean, Philly's a good team. Philly is one of the contenders in the NFC. We we played our D game. We played a D game. And we had a chance to win it with a minute left. Third and 16, we get two we get two stops and we win the game. So as bad as it was, and it was really bad, I, I I have faith that you know we're we're not we're not the undefeated team that scores forty four points a game. We're not that, but we're also not last year. I think we're somewhere in the middle, and somewhere in the middle probably can still compete. Well, can certainly still compete for the NFC South, but can also be a playoff team and and whatever. Like this doesn't change this doesn't change anything as far as the everything we've said about the Saints aren't you know the Saints aren't one of the worst teams in the NFL. The Saints aren't a 6-win team. The Saints aren't a 5-win team. The Saints aren't a 7-win team. You know like this doesn't really change any of that. Everything's still the same. This is a bad game. This was a really ugly game. Just like the Ravens had a really ugly game against the Raiders, just like the Bengals had a really ugly game against the Patriots. It happens. It's one game. Uh, like I said, it means we won't go undefeated. Beyond that, doesn't mean much. Uh, let's look defensively. So this, the big question, the big question that we had going into this game was the Saints were finally going to face a good rushing offense, and we were not good at stopping the run last year. Well, I don't know if y'all can see this, but it looks like we weren't very good at stopping the run today. Uh, Saquon Barkley ran for 17 carries. 147 yards, including the 65-yard touchdown run. Uh, if you whittle that down, that turns into 16 carries for 80 yards, basically. Uh, if you take out the chunk play, uh, still, you know, we weren't good against the run. Jalen Hurts, interesting from Philly. that They decided, let's just let him throw it 40 times. Uh, Kellen Moore, wild stuff. Wild stuff. Uh, real quick, I'll just say, like, Kellen Moore... I think what you saw today is a guy who was not in Philadelphia when the tush push philosophy kind of became accepted. And so when he is calling plays, when it is obvious to do the tush push last year and the year before, Philadelphia would have just done the tush push and got the first down. It had been fine. Kellen Moore now, when it's obvious to do the tush push, he gets away from it and he gets cute. He does play action. He does rollouts. He does... That's what we saw against Atlanta. They should have done the tush push. Instead, they do some dump off to Saquon when he drops it. Today, they should have done the tush push. All of a sudden, now they're doing like rollouts and play action, or they're doing you know cute, cute kind of jet sweep plays. So Kellen Moore kind of has a bit of a philosophical issue right now with the tush push, tush push. And who that hurt the most was me with my Jalen Hurts over nine and a half carries bet. He ends up at eight. 
If he gets two tush pushes, which he certainly could have uh, this game, he gets that easily. Uh, I don't think Philly ran a single tush push this game, and they had multiple opportunities to. Uh, for both sides, I mean, this is like both sides did everything they could to lose this game. I mean, New Orleans blocked a punt, couldn't take advantage. They go for a fourth down. They don't get it. For some reason, they'll kick. Uh, you know, Phil, same thing, like, you know, turnovers on downs from the Saints. Philly can't can't execute. It was ugly all around. I mean, it was ugly all around. A couple, and then you look at God, Dallas Goddard, like, what 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 in the world are we doing? Devontae Smith has a big game, expected. He's the only person on the field. Devontae Smith gets hurt. It's Dallas Goddard, Paris Campbell, Kenneth Gainwell, like Kobe got hurt. So how is Goddard so open? How is he so open on third and 16? Why aren't we just dropping back in some super soft zone, letting them get 10 yards? Who cares? And then it's fourth and six, fourth and seven with the game on the line. Why are we in man? Why are we in man in that situation? I understand two players picked each other. Two Saints defenders picked each other, and that's what allowed Goddard to get open. But why are we even in man? What are we even trying to do? It's third and 16. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And and I understand a lot of people are going to come out here and say, you know, well, you know, the defense played their tail off. You know, that's going to be, you're going to hear a lot of that, right? Yeah, well, it looks to me like they gave up seven yards of play. And it looked to me like they gave up 500 yards of total offense. So I understand they were on the field a lot, but seven yards of rush, seven yards per play, 500 yards of offense. I don't know about that. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's fair to say the defense had an A-plus performance today and the offense blew it. I think both sides, you know, both sides contributed. Obviously, the offense should score more than 12 points. But third and 16 with the game on the line, the defense has to do something. Letting seven yards of carry happen, not going to work. Letting seven yards per play happen, not going to work. <clears throat> Alave was good. Uh, Carr was bad today. You know, he, he looked similar to last year. But it, it's, it's, so, it's so funny how, like, if you watch the game, you'll understand what I'm saying, but... This game, there were so many moments that reminded me of last year. Like miscommunication, people not knowing where they were, having to call timeouts. Uh, you know, Carr at one point turned. Kamara was on the other side of him for the handoff. It was like a weird handoff. And, and I think it just shows you how delicate this system is and how delicate this scheme is to where, you know, it is a shallow roster, especially on the offensive line. It's a shallow roster with, you know, even we talked about how Taysom is kind of like your third running back and your and your fourth receiver. Well, when he goes down, all of a sudden now, <clears throat> you're losing a whole lot. You know, it shows how shallow some of, some of this positional depth is. Offensive line, same thing. Where McCoy goes down, all of a sudden you can't do much. Uh, so it is a razor's edge kind of system. Boom or bust, I guess, but, you know, tough game. Really tough game. Now, I'll tell you this right now. If we, go, if we go and beat Atlanta next week, who cares? I will take this trade. If I could take one of the two, if I could choose, if I could choose, if I could choose to lose to Philly and beat Atlanta or beat Atlanta, or uh, beat Philly and lose to Atlanta, I would choose lose to Philly and beat Atlanta. So if we beat Atlanta next week and we're three and one, who cares about this game? Could care less. Could care less. That's what I would say. The biggest surprise to me in this game was the Saints' inability to run the football. I mean... Three, you know, three point one yards of carry. Let's just call it three point three. Three point three yards of carry. Not going to get it done. Uh, but also, I was really surprised at how Kellen Moore operated with Jalen Hurts. I was really surprised that he straight up said, "We're going to let Jalen Hurts huck it forty times a game." That was very surprising to me. Very surprising. Uh, Saquon chewing us up. Feels bad, man. But yeah, tough. Really tough stuff.
I mean, not good at all. Not good. I understand. I understand it's going to be a hot take week. I'll tell you that. It's going to be a lot of hot takes floating around this week. It's going to be a lot of... I'll go ahead and tell you what you're going to hear. I'll go ahead and tell you. I can feel my voice going. I'll go ahead and tell you. The hot take is going to be that it's last year all over again. The hot take is going to be that this is the same team as last year and we just had two good games. That's going to be the hot take. And if Baltimore beats Dallas, which right now they are up 14-3, if Baltimore beats Dallas, you're going to hear a whole bunch of Dallas isn't very good, Carolina's not very good, and thus we're not very good. I would tell you... I would tell you to be very careful with a knee-jerk reaction. Again, all this game tells you is that the Saints will not be undefeated. That's it. That's it. If you believed that, if you were one of the, if you were saying that, you know, the first two games, they're not the whole season, then one game certainly can't be the whole season. So <clears throat> hold on to your butts, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be a long season. We are three weeks in. We're two and one. Uh, I'm interested to hear what Kubiak and Allen have to say this week. Their interviews will be very interesting. I'm very interested to see how Allen approaches the answer of why he went for it on fourth and one. Makes no sense to me. And that's just such a bad. It's just such a bad decision. If it is, let's go look at it again. If it is fourth and one at the NOLA at the, at, and on the five-yard line, then it's like, okay, yeah, go for it. Because if you get it, you probably score a touchdown. But on the 18, if you get it, you're on the 17. How sure are you you're scoring a touchdown? You know, why risk, why risk it to more than likely just, just kick a field goal? And, and when it's 3 nothing, like this is another thing too, guys. I understand that now the cool thing is not to kick field goals, but in a game like this, when you are this deep into the game and it's 3 nothing, points are at such a premium, a field goal is much different than if you're playing in a you know, 56-55 shootout. Like at this point, field goals are a premium. They, they are worth gold. So turning them down is crazy. Unless you are in a situation where it's like, you know, you're on the one or two yard line. and But yeah, we miss Taysom a lot. We miss Eric Coy a lot. We'll be, we'll be monitoring the injury report. Here's the deal. Get healthy. Get Taysom back. Get McCoy back. Go to Dallas or uh, go to Atlanta. Beat Atlanta. We're three and one. And then who cares? Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be covering this game a ton Get on down in the comment section. I know everyone has a lot to say. I'll be down there replying. Also, speakpipe.com. Uh, there's a link in the description. Speakpipe.com is where you can leave your voice messages. A minute 30, you can sound off about this game. Let me hear what you have to say. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.